Okay, what we have here, this is a Vizio E320VL. And the problem that we're having with this television is, as you can see, the Amber Vizio logo is on. When we hit the power button, uh, it should change to white. And the picture should come in. Okay, change to white. Picture comes in. Uh, then it shuts back off. Okay, so we're going to pull this apart and uh, try to find out where the problem lies within the set. Okay, we've got the back off the TV, and this is the uh, power supply board here. Okay, uh, we're looking at the power supply board, and this here is the plug that comes from the main board to the power supply. Okay, good thing it's marked. Okay, uh, as you can see, we'll start from the bottom here. We've got 5.1 five, five volt standby, standby, standby. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have the standby voltage because the TV is actually coming on and the logo is lit and everything else and ground 12 volts and on off now these are the ones that we're concerned with okay uh, because what happens is the main board uh, tells the power supply to turn on after you hit the button okay so we want to see if there's a change in that when the tv actually shuts off okay if there is uh most likely the culprit is something on the main board okay Okay, so what we'll do is we'll ground our meter and take the uh, positive and we'll put it where it says on off. Okay, which are the, from the top are the one, two, three, four. Okay, the third and fourth ones down. So we'll put our meter on that. Okay, we'll hit the power. Back lights on, 3.2 volts. Back lights go off, shuts down, okay? Goes back down to zero. Okay. We'll try the second one. On off. I guess one could be for the uh, back lights and one for the power supply board. So let's see. Okay, we're turning on. As you can see, we've got back lights for a second, 3.2 volts. Okay, goes back off. Back lights go off. Okay. So evidently, uh, we're going to assume the main board is shutting the, shutting the television set down to switch the power supply on and off. And just to be sure, uh, where it says 12 volts here. I'm going to put our meter on the 12 volt one. Okay, 12 volts. Make sure we get that coming up. Uh, because uh, if that's wrong or low or there's nothing coming up there, then it could be a power supply problem too. We'll just shut the main board down. But uh, I highly doubt it. So let's try it again. Backlights, 12 volts. It's there. Okay. So another problem is on the main board. Okay, so this is the main board here. And uh, the first thing you wanna do on a set like uh, this is uh, go ahead and replace the E-Prime uh, before we replace the board because they're highly economical uh, versus buying a main board. Uh, actually, this main board right now is cheap if you can find it. Uh, it's about 55 or 60 bucks. I remember it used to be like 85 or 90 bucks. But uh, the E-Prime is, um, something I like to do first because I can't save you some money uh, the EEPROM they're only like 12 bucks now and to show you where they're at uh, we're gonna zoom in it's right next to the micro uh, it's usually like this on all Vizios uh, if you see the media take the big IC uh, that's the main microprocessor and the EEPROM which is the uh, uh, erasable electronic program or read-only memory okay which actually stores data and writes in and writes the EEPROM is uh, located right here, okay? Just a small um, eight pin chip. Uh, it's very easy to remove. I do have one, so we'll go ahead and replace that and we'll see what happens, okay? And the location number on that E Prime, as you can see, is U18, U18.
Okay, as you can see, this is the EEPROM here. Uh, once again, all right, next. Usually, EEPROMs are all, uh, uh, all the time located next to the uh, micro right here. In most cases, uh, only thing I can say these are they're very pretty easy to take off. Uh, just be careful about surface mounted things like this little chip right here. This looks like a little uh, capacitor, surface mount capacitor. Uh, but the only thing that you need to do is just get your soldering iron, get it hot, uh, get some solder, okay, iron, okay, and we'll just flow each side with solder. Just cover all the pins, okay, like so. What's gonna happen is we'll heat both sides up and it's gonna slide right off. You see that? No problem. Very easy. Okay. And then once we do that, we'll just clean the solder around there. That way the new EEPROM can kind of fit, you know, won't be sliding around while you're trying to put it on. So make sure the surfaces are very flat. Once again, I always watch the surface mounts there. I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. Okay. And then we'll clean the excess uh, flux around there. We'll just get some alcohol. Uh, I use green alcohol. You can use regular clear alcohol, 90% alcohol. I usually try to stay away from acetone. A lot of people, a lot of technicians use acetone. Uh, the reason I like acetone because it's so strong that uh, if, you actually get, if you actually get a little bit too much on the circuit board, uh, it will actually lift up and remove a surface mount uh, next to it uh, because it's so strong. So I'll just take this and I'll just clean the board up right here little q-tip and that makes the new EEPROM a little easier to stick on there okay okay just so happen to have an EEPROM okay now uh, one thing that is very important is you see this white dot here uh, that is your pin one it is also a dot on pin one on the EEPROM. Okay, make sure that that is pin one and do not turn it around, you know, that way. Otherwise, you're gonna be in big trouble, okay? So just put it on, you know, just like that. And then, um, can I hold it as good as you can there? Okay, try to get it as even as you can on both sides, uh, not overlapping the traces. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll get my iron here and I'll put a little solder on it. On the tip there. And then I'll just kind of hold this uh, over one of the pins until one uh, just either one of the pins, whichever one's easier for you, and that way it makes the rest of the hold the rest of the prime in place and you can uh, solder the other pins. Be very careful not to overlap or short anything out, uh, any pins out with the solder, okay? Okay, uh, we installed the other EEPROM. I actually did use a little thinner uh, tip of my soldering iron. If you can see that very good. Okay, I have a, that's usually better when you're, if you have a little thicker tip when you're taking it off, that's cool. When you're putting it back on, it's a little easier just to uh, use a thinner tip. So I'll just keep a little extra tips, uh, thin ones, uh, for especially for my EEPROMs. And so it's in there, so uh, now we'll just go ahead and fire it up and make sure this bad baby's working, okay? And uh, just so you know, when you order this EEPROM on the main board, uh, on the far left upper corner there, there's the part number on the board for the main board. Uh, it's sideways, so I'll read it to you. It's uh, 3632 one one two two 
uh, 0150, uh, the 3D is, uh, you don't, actually the, in parentheses you don't necessarily need that. And you, or you can also use the uh, suffix 0395 uh, with the first eight numerals the same. Once again, 3632-1122-0150 or-0395, either one. This is your logo. And ha, voila, it is staying on. Now, the next thing you want to do, and make sure you do this every time you place an EEPROM, is always check your inputs, especially the HDMI. Okay? Because uh, a lot of times people will actually, I, I, this happened to me uh, a few times, I've placed the EEPROM, comes on, TV comes on, but guess what? Uh, the HDMI is not working because evidently it was the wrong EEPROM because uh, I used the model number of the TV. Uh, or it all depends on, the, like I said, uh, on the board and the uh, make of the television. So always go by the board number when you order the EEPROMs. Okie dokie, looks like we are all set. Okay, so another one fixed with just a 15.